everybody. Um, I hope you were all able to see last week's children's conversation, even though I had some technical difficulties with uploading it. Uh, basically, the internet wasn't working here at church, and my internet at home is a little bit crummy. <laughs> um, so, but I did get it uploaded on Sunday, and in it I read the story of Beatrice, which is a true story about a girl whose family received a goat from Heifer International um, and how that goat changed her life. Today we're going to be reading another story about a family who received an animal from Heifer and how that animal not only changed the family's fortunes, but benefited the entire community through Heifer's practice of passing on the gift. Um, so we'll read that story in a little bit. But first I wanted to talk to you about something that the members of our church family are doing for you. Every day, members of our con congregation are lighting a candle and to specifically pray for you, for the children in our congregation, for the parents of our congregation, for the teachers of our congregation. Um, just trying to make it through this weird world of distance learning that we have found ourselves in. Um, so I am working with Jane Worst on how to ensure that we pray for each of you specifically. So if you have a specific prayer request that you would like us to pray for, for you about, go ahead and let me know. Um, if you're a little bit embarrassed by it or for some reason don't want everybody to know, I don't have to attach your name to the prayer request. I can just say there's a student who is having a really hard time missing his or her friends and then they will know to pray for that specifically. And even though your name isn't attached to it, God knows who you are and they're praying for you to find resolution to your, um, to your concern. So if you have a prayer request, you can email it to me, you can call me, you can text me, um, and if you don't have access to that, tell your parents that you want to, to contact me and they can absolutely help you contact me. Um, so, you know, any sort of prayer request you have, it doesn't have to be about school specifically. I was just using that as an example because so many of you um, either started school last week or will be starting school on Monday. I know my kids are both starting on Monday, so it's kind of a, a big day in Auburn, the 17th, when school starts again. Um, so just let me know, and we'll pray for you. And even if you don't let me know, we're still going to be praying for you, just um, not for your specific prayer request, just praying for you to um, have a good school year and that sort of thing. Um, so at the end of our time together, I'm going to be lighting a candle to say a prayer for the start of school. And it would be really terrific if you guys started doing this practice at home too. You can pray for yourself. You can pray for your teachers, your parents, for your friends, um, anywhere <laughs> in the world, really. So that's the beautiful thing about prayer is a way to connect people spiritually, even though they aren't together physically. So transitioning back to Heifer International, this is still the month of August. It's still Heifer Month at our church. Um, today I'm going to be reading a story about a girl named Flora who received a cow from Heifer years before our story takes place. Um, and we'll see not only how that cow changed her family's life, but how it impacted the whole community. So let's read. Okay. The story is... Flora and the Runaway Rooster. Flora lived in a little village in Rwanda, high in the mountains of Africa. More than anything, she wanted to go with her older brother and sister to their fine school in the city. At the local school Flora attended in her village, girls didn't play soccer. But she had heard that girls could play soccer at her brother and sister's school in the city. You're almost old enough to join us, her brother said. Until then, mother and father need you to do a good job helping with the chores. I will, Flora promised. I do all my chores. I can't wait to play soccer on the team at school. Our school isn't just for soccer, her sister said. It's for a better education so you can help others. But first, you have to help here at home. I know, Flora said. I'll feed the cows and take good care of our chickens. 
Watch out for the rooster, Kubika, her brother warned. He's always looking for an adventure. Just like you, Flora, her sister laughed. See the chickens there and the cow. While her brother and sister were away at school, Flora helped her family. She knew her brother and sister were able to go to the fine school in the city because of the cow her father had received several years ago from Heifer International. Because of that gift, they now had many cows and even chickens to earn money for her family. One day after school, Flora was practicing soccer when she should have been minding her chores and the adventurous rooster Kubika got out. By the time Flora realized it, Kubika was already strutting down the street through the village. Uh-oh, you see him back there? A little, little white speck there. There's Flora running after him. Come back here, chicken! Flora raced to catch Kubika. The clever rooster was too quick, however, and he slipped away. Flora hurried after Kubika and nearly caught him when, wham, she ran into her friend Gideon. Unlike Flora, who was able to attend the local school, Gideon's family couldn't afford to send him to any school. He worked every day delivering milk on his bicycle, hoping to raise enough money to pay for the school uniform and books. See Gideon there with his milk? Where are you going in such a hurry? Gideon asked her. My naughty rooster Kubika got out of our courtyard, Flora said. I can't let him get away. I'll help you, Gideon said. Which way did he go? That way. She pointed down the path leading down the mountain. That's too steep for my bike, Gideon said. But Flora, who was never afraid of an adventure, said, No, it's not. Hop on. They're there chasing the rooster. And here they go down the steep path. Down the bumpy path, Flora pedaled the bike, with Gideon clinging to the back for dear life. Down from the village they flew until they reached the fields of Mother Yacenta. Gideon was glad to get off. I have keen eyes, Gideon said. I'll spot that runaway rooster. Flora and Gideon looked everywhere but Kubika was nowhere to be found. When Flora heard an eagle cry, she covered her face and said, Oh no, Kubika has been caught by an eagle. Mother Yacenta came out from the, her field. Murajo, what's the matter, Flora? My rooster got away, Flora cried. I was supposed to take care of him. Now my parents will never let me go off to school with my brother and sister. Mother Yacenta pondered this. When your father's cow had its first calf, he gave it to me. He passed on the gift. And now look, I sell the milk and have bought more land, all because of his gift. So I gave my first calf to another family. I passed on the gift. This is how we help each other. Wait here, child. Mother Yacenta went back to her house. Who's hiding in the grass there? It's Kubika. There's Mother Yacenta. When Mother Yacenta returned, she was carrying a young rooster. This is for you, so you can join your brother and sister. Murakozi, Mother Yacenta, Flora said. Thank you. Murakozi to your father, Mother Yacenta replied. And there 
there she is with her chicken. Rooster. Flora and Gideon headed back up the path to the village. Flora was grateful for Mother Yacenta's gift, but worried what her parents would say. She had lost the rooster Kubika, after all. Would your parents be upset? Probably. There she is following Gideon. Poor guy has to push that bike all the way back up the hill. Look, Gideon shouted. Isn't that Kubika? Flora might never have seen the rooster if it hadn't been for Gideon's keen eyes. But there Kubika was, pecking away under a patch of sorghum. Flora and Gideon weren't the only ones who spied him. Down from the sky streaked an eagle. Flora kicked her soccer ball. It rocketed straight at the eagle. As the eagle dodged out of the way, Gideon dove to catch Kubika. Got you! There she is kicking the soccer ball. And there's Gideon catching the rooster. When they returned to her house, Flora said, Wait here. She brought Gideon one of her hens. I want you to have her, Flora said, and I want you to keep the rooster from Mother Yacenta. But Mother Yacenta gave him to you, Gideon said. What would she say if I kept him? That we have to pass on the gift, Flora replied. If her rooster helps you earn enough money to go to school, I think Mother Yacenta would be very happy. Murakozi, Flora, Gideon said before he hurried back home. Where have you been? Flora's mother asked her. Kubika got away, she said, but Gideon helped me catch him. You have to watch out for that rooster, her mother warned. He's always looking for an adventure, just like you. Flora smiled. Her adventure chasing Kubika had been fun, but better still, her adventure had taught her how to pass on the gift. And see, there's Flora waving at Gideon, who's now in a school uniform. So Gideon gets to go to school too. Pretty cool, huh? So it's kind of interesting, I think, how these kids, their big dream is to go to school, both with Beatrice and with Flora and with Gideon. Their big dream is to go to school because they value an education. And it's so important to get an education, and it's something that you guys and I all sort of, if anything, we dreaded, right? You sort of, you don't want the summer to end because summer is so much fun, but then school starts and that's something that these kids really look forward to because they don't get it um so that that chicken and rooster really changed Gideon's life huh he got to go to school at the end um I really love how Heifer International makes it possible for these kids to go to school and get an education because that just continues to pass on the gift when you get an education you know more you can do more um and there are all sorts of stories about kids um, who, when they get that education, can make really incredible changes. Um, I can tell you a story next week, maybe, about a boy who used his education and his curiosity to um, bring his entire community out of poverty, which is really cool. It's too long of a story to read, but um, it's something that Caden has read a lot, a couple of times. It's a good book. So... I know that school is going to be starting on Monday for a lot of you. So let's go ahead and take this moment to um, light a candle and pray for the start of school. I'm going to move my camera down so you can see my candle here. This is the same candle that we use in Sunday school. I got it out of the Sunday school room. And um, 
I always ask you guys in Sunday school, why do we light the candle when we gather together? Right? We create an altar a lot of times, and it's to help us focus our attention on what we're doing so that we can take the time to be very conscientious about saying our prayer. Okay? So that's why we're going to light a candle um, and say our prayer. So let's go ahead and fold hands and bow your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for the opportunity to go to school and learn all sorts of things. How to read, how to do math, how the world works, and art and music. Thank you for our teachers who work so hard to help us learn these things and grow to love us throughout the school year. Thank you for our friends who help us learn and play, and thank you for our parents who work hard to make sure we have the best opportunities possible. This year we ask you to help us, our teachers and parents, figure out distance learning. Help us not be too sad about missing our friends or frustrated at the failures of technology. With your help, we know that this can still be a great year. Please also help our scientists and doctors as they work to find an end to the pandemic so that we can safely return to school in person as soon as possible. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. I hope you all have a really wonderful start to the school year. Um, and again, if you guys have any prayer requests, please send me an email, give me a call, shoot me a text so that um, we can pray for you specifically. Have a great week. Bye.